Well, I want to show you a picture of all of the infant butchers that Kamala Harris met with. Here they are. Here's all these infant butchers. You see Kamala Harris there. Um, that Kuvar man, he is the um, second from the right in the back. He's the one in the white lab coat, of course, also wearing the mask. In fact, I believe he is the only man there. All of the, everyone in that room um, is a woman, look at me assuming their gender, um, who all murder children, who murder preborn women. He's the only guy in there um, in Kamala Harris meeting with all of these homicidal maniacs. Between all of those individuals in this picture, you're, you're, you're talking tens of thousands, ten, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of lives that those individual blood-stained hands have taken, that those individual hands have, have ripped human beings limb from limb apart and rearranged their freaking body parts and pieces on the table. The, at the head of the table, on the opposite end of Kamala Harris, that woman is the director of Whole Woman's Health in Texas. And she was the one who went on Rachel Maddow and had, were nearly crying, nearly crying on television about how women won't be able to kill their babies and lots of babies will now be alive and survive in the state of Texas. So I just thought you should see this. But this should not surprise you, right? Because Democrats have always supported lynchings. They've simply adjusted the age of their victims. Rather than lynching born black people, they simply lynch black people before they're born, before they can scream, before they can protest, before they can say, I dissent. And they channel their racism, which is still alive and well today in the Democrat party, by the way, by convincing black women that they need abortion and that it's actually safer than childbirth. Here's a tweet from Planned Parenthood Black Community. Check this out. I've, I've shown you this on the show before. And this is Planned Parenthood telling black women that if they care about their own health, you should always get an abortion. It says, statistically, a black woman in America, it's safer to have an abortion than to carry a pregnancy to term and give birth. Hashtag scary stats. Okay, think about what they're saying. They're telling black women, if you care about your health, if you care about you, your life, and the children and family members that you have a duty to take care of and provide. I mean, you gotta take care of your health. You don't wanna be harmed, right, in the process of, of, of your reproductive dreams because you have other people to care for. And so listen, some stat here, some, some study here that I can't really show you because it's all based on BS studies. It actually, it says that when you're pregnant as a black woman in America, it is always more dangerous to give birth to that child than to have an abortion. Or killing that baby through an abortion is always safer than carrying that child to term and giving birth. So what is the abortion industry saying? Who makes a disproportionate amount of their money on, on lynching black babies in the womb, on womb lynchings? Because uh, three and a half percent of the American public are black women of childbearing age. So three and a half percent of the American public make up, ready? 37% of the annual abortions. Yes, those are figures from the CDC. I can show those to you. I've showed it on the show before. 3.5% of the public obtains 37% of the abortions. Planned Parenthood knows this. And so they say, ah, if you care about your health, always kill your baby. If you're black, always kill your baby because it's safer than giving birth to that child. This racism is still alive and well in the Democrat Party and the abortion industry. But I repeat myself, for these are the bedfellows of the culture of death. And of course, Kamala Harris and the Democrats celebrate and support these infant lynchers in this photo I just showed you. Infant lynchers, which coincidentally helps them control the black population, right? Which was always Planned Parenthood's goal. The Democrat Party has always associated themselves with, partnered with, and celebrated the most disgusting people in America. Let me give you a brief history of that bigoted racist history because I think I made a case that it's alive and well today when the sitting vice president of the free world can invite homicidal mass murderers to the White House to celebrate all that they're doing for women, minus pre-born women, of course, all that they're doing for minority populations, minus the genocide that they're wielding on minority populations while they murder over 300,000 black people in the womb every year, which means the abortion industry lynches more black people in two weeks than the KKK lynched in a century. Yes, not only is racism and lynchings alive and well today, but they're actually more prevalent than they've ever been before. The Democrat Party is just more winsome and cunning in how they pitch the lynchings that they still defend and celebrate. January 1865, January 1865, 100 of House Republicans supported the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. 78% of House Democrats opposed it, 
voted against it. 1868, Democrats nominated Horatio Seymour and Francis Blair for president and vice president against Ulysses S. Grant. So Seymour was the Democrat candidate. Seymour's general election campaign slogan against Ulysses S. Grant was this, ready? Quote, this is a white man's country, let white men rule. 1916, a segregation order reading the following. Beginning Wednesday, August 9th, 1916, the toilet seats in the state, war, and Navy department buildings will be allotted for use as toilets for women, for white men, and for colored men. That segregation order was signed by Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Democrat Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 1922, Democrats sank Republican Representative Leonidas Dyer's anti-lynching bill, which would have made lynching a federal crime and shielded blacks from being hung in trees. It passed the Republican-controlled House in January 1922, and Senate Democrats filibustered it that November. 1937, FDR nominates former Klansman Hugo Black to the Supreme Court. And yes, he knew that he was a former Klansman. Democrats embraced and stood side by side with U.S. Senator and former Klansman Robert Byrd, a senator from West Virginia, for decades. He was the senator from West Virginia from 1959 to 2010 when he passed. Robert Byrd wrote the KKK's Imperial Wizard in 1946 saying, quote, The Klan is needed today as never before, and I am anxious to see its rebirth here in West Virginia. Hillary Clinton called Robert Byrd, her, quote, friend and mentor, end quote. And at Robert Byrd's funeral, Obama eulogized him, saying, quote, it seems to me that his life is bent towards justice. A former Klan's member, a former KKK member, and someone who wrote The Grand Wizard, saying, we need to reawaken the Klan in West Virginia. And how about Margaret Sanger? Let's come full circle, shall we? She is hailed as a hero and near God to the Democrat Party in the religion of secular progressivism. Margaret Sanger spoke at a KKK rally once, wrote about it in her journal. She once said, quote, we do not want word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. She wrote regarding birth control, how she wanted to use birth control. Here's what she said. The campaign for birth control is not merely of eugenic value, but is practically identical in ideal with the final aims of eugenics. In other words, Margaret Sanger says, it's not just that birth control has some eugenic value, it's that, th that its very purpose is for eugenics. And some of the people that Margaret Sanger wanted to eugenics, right, wanted to eliminate from polite society, were indeed not just the retarded, not just the uh, physically deformed and the mentally unfit, she claimed, but also blacks. Yes, she wanted to control the black population and like Planned Parenthood does today, get black people on board with the program, pitch it under false compassion, get them to defend it so that other minority populations that share their race will look to Planned Parenthood and see, look at all the black people. Just like me, I guess abortion can't be all that bad. When receiving the Margaret Sanger Award, Hillary Clinton said, quote, it was a great privilege when I was told that I would receive this award. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. She should have said her eugenics vision. And when I think about what she did all those years ago in Brooklyn, taking on archetypes, taking on attitudes and accusations flowing from all directions, I am really in awe of her. And now, of course, the Democrat Party and Planned Parenthood is finally acknowledging their racist history, of which Margaret Sanger was the fountainhead, but uh, too little too late. The Democrat Party's ideas and philosophies haven't changed. They've just gotten more cunning in their marketing, PR, and implementation. Like slavery, abortion also dehumanizes its victim class to justify their mistreatment, and it invents arbitrary functions and properties, and then demands that their victim class meet those functional requirements before they can be recognized as persons. But like racists before them, pro-abortion cheerleaders know beforehand that their victim class will fail to meet their litmus test for personhood. They just invent these cognitive abilities, functions, and properties that they demand their victim class meet with the full knowledge that they won't be able to meet their arbitrary litmus test for personhood. It's not done ironically, it's done very intentionally in order to come up with sort of the philosophical argument they need to justify their bigotry, to justify the mistreatment of the victim class that they want to eliminate. 
One day, that disgusting photo of Kamala Harris sitting with and celebrating mass murderers will be remembered and spoken of with disgust, and the Kamala Harris statues will topple and her street names will be renamed. But more than that, friends, our grandchildren will curse us too if we did nothing to stop this genocide. For to quote Wilberforce, you can no longer say that you did not know. Or as Bonhoeffer said, not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. Silence in the face of evil is itself evil. And God will not hold us guiltless. If you stand in the middle of the road, you will get run over by a truck. There is no moral neutrality or neutral position on the genocide of baby image bearers.